Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Diocesan Advent Meditations. I'm Patty Ames, your Canon for Christian Formation, and we'll be walking with you on this Advent journey. These meditations are being recorded, so you may want to turn off your video. I will be doing that when we begin. Everyone will remain muted during the meditation so that you can slow down and listen as we prepare for the coming of the Christ child. Tonight's music is a gift shared with us by Susan Carroll and Sumner Jenkins from St. Paul's in Lynchburg. And the reflection is given by our Bishop, Mark Berlacus. There will be periods of silence as well. Now, I invite you to still your mind and open your heart as we begin our Advent journey. Let us pray. Loving God, be with us this Advent season and help us to slow down, be quiet, and prepare for the coming of the Christ child. You created light and gave us the light of the world in Jesus. As we see the light of this candle, 
keep us ever mindful of the light of Christ in each person and help us to be a light to others. Amen. An Advent Affirmation of Faith from Iona. We believe that God is present in the darkness before the dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over the barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability, and into the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, take risk, live powerfully, and face humility, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the spirit for God's new community of hope. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, but about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. 
two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. It's good to be with you on this first of our Advent meditations. With the lighting of the first Advent candle, we are now embarked on the holy and blessed season of Advent. And in, in morning prayer, when we begin, we say, Our Lord and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Notice that our Lord and Savior now draws near, that Jesus approaches us first. And then we make the decision or we make the approach to come and adore like those wise men uh, do later on after Jesus is born. As you begin Advent, I hope that you will find opportunities for prayer and meditations, carving out some extra time for uh, being uh, with yourself and uh, being with God in prayer. Every Advent season, I try to pick out an icon that I might use of the mother and child uh, during my meditations uh, during the season of Advent. And this year, I uh, picked out the Virgin Elusia, which uh, I will um, show you in just a minute. And I usually light a candle in front of it, and I have my uh, prayer reading and, and my morning prayer. And that usually is a very quiet time and, um, and it, um, for, for meditation. But recently, uh, we made the decision to um, uh, have a new uh, beagle pup in our lives. So we have this puppy who's not really that much interested in uh, my desire for quiet time with Jesus. And so she keeps jumping up on the couch and knocking my book out and almost spilling my coffee and trying to bite the pen I'm using to mark things in my reading and getting up in my face and licking and licking and licking. And at first, I um, found this to be a slight, um, a slight bit of an irritation uh, to my meditation until I realized with God's grace, uh, the blessing in that desire for this puppy to be in my life. And as I looked at the icon, and you can see it here now, um, it dawned on me or just sort of the Holy Spirit um, uh, put into my um, vision. Uh, this child, uh, the way the child climbs up uh, on on uh, his mother, onto Mary. You can see his hand uh, around her neck and his face pushing up to kiss hers. And if you look at his feet, he's you know actually pushing up. Anyone who's uh, held a rambunctious child that's really wanting your attention and climbing up into your lap knows that sensation of of a child clinging and maybe kissing and and, and being all over the place. And I would suggest to you. Um, and I think that's what the icon is about, is that God desires in Jesus Christ to come into our lives, to be that close, to be hugging us and kissing us and, and, and being um, close to our hearts. And you might begin to think in this season about how uh, Jesus desires to come uh, towards us. And as you do uh, that time of prayer, you might think about um, it, it's tempting to think about Mary being pregnant and being very calm and pensive. Uh, but maybe an alternative image for this Advent is this um, Jesus desiring uh, to really, uh, really crawl up into our lives. Uh, maybe that could be an image that you might think about. Because the journey between the distance that we make in Advent is really not between us and God. As Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, likes to say, the journey is really between more, um, you know, um, my own reality, between myself and me. 
where am I? And, and, and how open am I uh, to having the Christ child be born again in me with all that that means? Opening myself and being vulnerable to a new beginning. So my prayer for you in this season of Advent is that you will uh, see and pray about and think about God desiring to come very near to you and open yourself up more and more to wanting to adore him so that Christmas Eve may be a real blessing in your life. Amen. It's good to be. in search of our kneeling places. In each heart lies a Bethlehem, an inn where we must ultimately answer whether there is room or not. When we are Bethlehem bound, we experience our own advent in his. When we are Bethlehem bound, we can no longer look the other way conveniently not seeing stars, not hearing angel voices. We can no longer excuse ourselves by busily tending our sheep or our kingdoms. This Advent, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has made known to us. In the midst of shopping sprees, let's ponder in our hearts the gift of gifts. Through the tinsel, let's look for the gold of the Christmas star. In the excitement and confusion in the merry chaos, let us listen for the brush of angels' wings. This Advent, let's go to Bethlehem and find our kneeling places.
Let us pray. Almighty God, who is present with us in both the darkness and the light, and in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Good night and God bless.